Hey folks, welcome to the shop. I just want to show you the quick and easiest way to rig up a braided blackfish rod that you use for jigs. I learned this from Captain Cliff Simer over in Florida. I like it. Usually when I do, uh, when I join the braid to monofilament, I'll do a double union. It takes a little bit longer time. So this quick little technique is Captain Cliff's and I dig it and it's, uh, I just applied it really right away when I left Florida. I came back up to do some black fishing. I applied it for both heavy duty stuff, all right, the big setup for blackfish for 50 pound test setups with 60 pound leader. The hook of course is 30 pound. And then I also used it for the uh, jigging rods, all right? The rods that we're using on jigs work perfectly. And I'm going to show you how to do it real quick, all right? So I'm going to use this right here. This is going to be just a regular. I don't have my blackfish rods with me, so this is an old school rod right here. And I'm going to grab that right there. Basically, what we're going to do is we got our monofilament, which is going to be 30-pound test. We're going to take just a little less than an arm's length, all right? That's how simple this will be. We cut it off, take the two lines, just overlap them a little bit, all right? Just like this. We're going to make an overhand loop like this, all right? So if you can see that. And now this is the line that's going out to the rod. This is going to be a leading material. That's just the tag end right there, the braid. We're just going to take them, go through the loop four times. One, real simple. We can do this like 100 miles an hour if you want. Two, just make sure both of them go through. Three, and we'll go probably one more time. Four, all right? So then you have this overhand loop. Just gonna wet it up. Just gonna pull it together. You see that knot, it's tight as nuts right there. I shouldn't be saying that, but. Then we grab the braid and the mono pull, and that's it. I'm gonna trim these tips. I'm going to trim that extra braid. And that's it, bro. I mean, it's it's easy stuff. That's it. So that's the knot that's going to go, you got to pull that thing all day long. Nothing's going to happen. All right, so now where we're going with this, that's going to join our braid to our mono with that knot. Really simple. Overhand loop, come through four times, both wet it, pull it. You can really, guys, could do this in two seconds. And then let's see if I can find a jig head somewhere around here, which I probably don't even have. All right. Let's pretend, let's pretend that this rat right here from Title Tales is just a blackfish jig, all right? So basically what we want to do is we're going to tie that overhand knot. We're going to do the loop. We're going to do that rappel knot, all right? It's going to go, so you have a overhand knot. It's going to come through, all right? It's going to go through the eye, through that knot again, that hole. Very hard to see. And you're going to wrap above that four times, two, three, Four, come back through that hole right there. Grab my hands and then just gonna pull down towards the uh, tidal tail. And that's the rappling out right there. This is much bigger than I want it to be. I'm gonna trim that top. All right. All right so that's the rappling out right there. It's got the loop. All right, you use that on live bait a lot. It's a cool knot. There's the rat. All right, that's it basically. All right, this I would have pulled tighter because but it's very hard for me to do this when I'm looking at the camera. So that's how you're gonna fish that jig. Obviously, you're not gonna be using this high vis 30 pound test, right? That was just an example right there because I have all the leading material on the boat. I do 30, 30, 30 pound braid or 20 pound braid. It doesn't really make a difference. It's very difficult to break 20 pound braid. But I do 30-30, and the Johnny Knife from Tile Tales does 40-40. But I do 30-30, and I'll use a monofilament, all right? So it's going to be 30-pound braid to 30-pound monofilament right to the uh, Tile Tales jig. That's what I do, all right? So what is fishing? Fishing? It's a jerk on this end, waiting for a jerk on the other. Huh? I'm here all week. Don't forget to tip your butt, and it's You can use a rappel and I, like I showed you. Just when you tie, make the loop just a little small. Not a big deal. I mean, that's going to get big, big time. <laughs> you could use a palm knot. You could use improved clinch knot, too. It's really not an action. You're going to drop that uh, jig to the sea floor and just kind of let it sit there. So it's not as if you have to work it like a live bait, where this rappel knot would be very good to use a live bait. How that loop right there from the rappel knot works on the eye and it gives a lot of free spinning. So if you're, if you're throwing that live bait, it obviously gives it a much more lively presentation when it's able to do that. And the approved clinch and the polymer knot does not allow you to do that, all right? So that's food for thought. I always say this a lot, but blackfish isn't, isn't splitting the atom here, all right? Drop that jig to the seafloor, let it sit. 
you're gonna get a little bite catch, you're gonna get bites. But we went through all that stuff. You get a little bite, you're gonna wait for the right bite and then lift up once you feel weight settle all the way. All right, that's it. All right, guys, so I have some old footage right now just to prove a point that when we're talking about monofilament versus fluorocarbon, let's look real closely at the behavior of these fish right now. So, what I'm doing here is I'm fairly shallow in water, I am dropping down a jig right above it, probably 12 inches above it is a camera all right so this is this is this goes to the theory of being line shy blackfish all right i'm dropping that down these fish are going nuts on it all right they don't care about what monofilm the fluorocarbon is visibility there is sketchy you know obviously it, uh, when you see those particles coming through the algae and all the other stuff and the plankton coming through it's touching the touching the line so it's it, it, it's negating what fluorocarbon offers all right so that's just my point here this is just for me doing a lot of underwater footage just just watching fish behavior and stuff like that. And that guy's trying to show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, there's no nonsense here. My theory is here, save your money on the fluorocarbon. Don't let be fooled by people who do these things that I uh, use only fluorocarbon for that stuff. I don't know if they have underwater cameras and really truly see how fish behave, okay? Down in the water, especially if you're fishing wrecks and reefs and stuff like that, it's, it just doesn't make a difference, in my opinion. If you guys want to argue that fact, please, in the comments below, tell me I'm wrong and do all this other stuff. Let's think about this, though. Is fluorocarbon versus uh, regular monofilament going to mean anything, okay? So I just want to touch on something real quick here. I always say, you know, just relax when you feel a tap, tap, tap. Just disregard the taps, all right? I just want to show you that I don't make this stuff up and I'm just not talking at my petunia here, all right? This is exactly what I see and this is why I tell you. Those taps of those fish, they're all going nuts trying to whack this thing. They're ripping off legs and stuff like that. But you'll see right here, this next fish is going to come. He's going to grab and say, no, nah, I'm taking this. See you guys later. So that blackfish now takes it with the camera and takes off with it. And then I can clearly feel a second real hit. And that's that guy taking my bait and going off with it. That's what blackfish will do. You'll drop it down to the sea floor. A bunch of scary monsters are going to come out there. The porgies, if they're there. And small blackfish are going to start eating it. And one guy's going to say, no, nah, this is mine. So that's what I'm trying to explain to you when you differentiate that hit when you're on the jig all right so you got that boom 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 exactly like I've been preaching for every video I've done is that you're gonna get those taps just stay with them don't react to them all right when that next guy comes and says I'm out of here with this thing that's the one you want to lift up and then say hello to him all right because that's the guy who's gonna be the guy who's taking that bait so that's basically really validate what I'm trying to tell you guys out there I don't make this stuff up <laughs> Every person I take out there, it's all monofilament, all right? 30 pound monofilament on the jigs. I go up to uh, 60 pound top shot on my on the bigger stuff. So it's 50 pound test on the big uh, accurates that I'm using. The Acura Phoenix says those are 50 pound braid to 60 pound top shot with a drop loop out to a 30 pound right here. Out to a 30 pound right here is basically what I have. I have one hanging up there, all right? This is a number five odd hook. This is a bigger hook and uh the four or five odd and then this is i call it hard line it's leading material see how it stands out like that and it just stands out so any finally care what fish you're talking about is going to attack this thing right here all right so that's it this is my big stuff you know i gotta throw a sound effect in there all right trying to get people who are new to black fishing get a little more understanding about black fishing all right that's it what else do i got to talk about here i think that's it show everybody the knots in action check these two fish out right now <laughs> <laughs> He's running! Oh, I got some heavy drag on this thing. <laughs> nice one. There you go, guys, right there. We're going back in. It's up. It's up. Oh my god! <laughs> those rods right there are the tsunamis with the uh, 2500 PGs on there. You can get those at JH. We're finishing up working with JH this year. Uh, we're gonna be moving on. All right, JH is a killer place to get your stuff. All right, JH.com. They have those rods and reels. We'll be working until the end of the year with them, and then we're gonna move on. Go there, go to JH. Great store, great people working there. Ladies, I'm Brandon with the kid over here. I want to do the Egypsy giveaway with Captain Jesse. Here it goes. Captain Jesse right now. Who is the winner of this week's giveaway? 
three Tony Maja spoons. What's, What's up, kid? kid? Gypsy Charters here. I <laughs> uh, would like to thank Kiko Cheese, Captain Mark Gary, Tony Maja Jr. coming out to make an episode. A lot of fun, a lot of laughs, oh, a lot of fish. As promised, gonna give away uh, three number four bunker spoons. Digi Jams! Digi Jams! You're the winner! You won a Digi Jams, put them to good use. You know, catch a lot of fish and uh, have a good time. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Take care, Con Nation. Take care, brush your hair. Oh, that's right. Captain Jesse right there picking Digi Jams. Digi Jams, I'll send you a DM on YouTube, all right? And get in touch with you. You got a couple of days to respond to me or else you're done. You're the fat kid in Dodge Boy. You're out, we'll pick somebody else, all right? I'll have Jesse pick somebody like that. What? All right, this is my new technique. I'm doing very uh, spinning around right now. There's the boat right there. Uh, I hope this uh, video helped you guys out, especially in new cast. I want to do some quick rigging on the fly here, and you want to just do a mono to uh, braid uh, technique. That's easy as heck, and I hope that works out for you guys, and uh, teach kids that little technique right there. It's very simple. Uh, secondly, the Dylan Steigerwald tournament happened the other day. I'm going to let this gentleman right now tell you who won it, and uh, we'll go to it right now, as a matter of fact. Again, fish with Gypsy Charles. It's going to come to a point that you're not even going to be able to get on that boat. That's how cool that boat is. Those two captains are killer. You got, uh, it's, a, it's really a team effort over there. It's Captain Jesse, uh, Captain Josh, and J-Rod. Captain J-Rod, those guys really put their clients on fish. Get over there, fish with those guys. I really like them. Uh, hopefully, you see more on Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. And uh, let's go over to the Don't Stike Wolf final uh, count on who won that tournament, all right? Take care, everybody. Remember, like Jesse said, brush your hair. And in first place, I don't even know if I can say it. <laughs> we got Tommy Manila on the Blue Haven with a 33.3 pound straight fish. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so congratulations to Tom on the big W right there. Also, we got Aiden right here. Aiden reached out to me, said the bite's going really killer over uh, outside of Fire Island. He was on Dark Matter. I think he named, named the boat Dark Matter out of Point Lookout. Uh, those guys went out there, jigged up a bunch of bass. So this is uh, Aiden with a nice bass right there. Congratulations to Aiden. So if you guys are out there, I know this wind is killing us because it's killing me with charters. But uh, get out there. Get out there. Get on that South Shore bite, man. Also, the Trey Palms... Last bass fishing tournament of the year is November 25th over at Trace Palms. That's the information right there. Give Danny a call, register for that tournament. That's one of the best tournaments. I really enjoy that tournament right there. Usually fish with Captain Roy Manger on the Georgie Girl. Hopefully that guy's in the game. I just reached out to him. We got to get going there, Captain Roy, all right? I got all the stuff we need to use. I got a lot of gear, all right? Matter of fact, it's right over there. It's very heavy. But uh, we'll be all set with that. Trace Palms. November 25th, call Trace Palms right there, reach out to Danny, say, yo, I just saw the kid put this up on the uh, internet, I gotta join, alright, get over there, we'll be over there having a couple of sarsaparillas with you guys, so come see us over at Trace Palms for the last best fishing tournament of the year. Thanks for watching Kid Coach Cheese, everybody consider subscribing below, like if you like, I like the likes. I may have some dislikes now with that little uh, fluorocarbon thing where people are gonna say fluorocarbon is the way to go, but whatever, people are gonna... Have their opinions, let's put it that way. I got no problem with that. All right, so thanks for watching Kiko Cheese Outdoors. Stay tuned for the next episode. Who knows what it's going to be, all right? I have a couple ideas. Take care, everybody. Remember, it's been blowing the last week. Brush your hair. Shake it is. Oh, I got to go. Hey, folks, thanks for watching Kiko Cheese Outdoors. Again, consider subscribing below and like if you like. Hope to see you guys and girls over at Trace Palms on November 25th for the last Bass Fishing Tournament of the Year.